10. John chapter 10. John chapter number 10. Everyone has your Bible. Everyone turning to John chapter number 10. Thieves and robbers. Thieves and robbers. The Bible says in John chapter 10, verse number 1, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Thieves and robbers. Look at verse 8. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. Now, John chapter number 10, of course, it's a discourse on the good shepherd. The shepherd forms his flock. The shepherd feeds his flock. The shepherd protects his flock. The, the Palestinian sheepfolds were usually walled enclosures near the village. And numerous shepherds would place their flocks in the fold at night. And then each one would gather his own sheep in the morning. And there was no problem. And there, was no, there was no worry about him getting other sheep because the sheep knew his voice. They knew the shepherd's voice. He would get his sheep in the morning and then he would lead them out to pasture for the day. Now, it was this morning activity that verse number 1 through 6 of John chapter number 10 is speaking of. Now, if you'll notice in verse number 1 and 2, the shepherd, he comes the proper way. The Bible said in verse number 1 and 2, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber, but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The true shepherd comes the proper way. The shepherd who has a right to the sheep does not need to sneak into the fold. He doesn't need to climb over the wall. He can enter in through the door. So the Lord Jesus Christ could come to his people because he had the right. And did you know that not only he had the right, just being who he was, he had the credentials and the requirements to back it up. And they're given, by, by the way, in the Old Testament. If you'll notice... Um, the credentials given uh, concerning the Lord Jesus Christ, just some of them out of the Old Testament, is he was from the tribe of Judah. He was of the household of David. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 said, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And we know that Emmanuel being interpreted according to Matthew is what? Is God... God with us, God, God with us. So the Lord Jesus Christ had the credentials. According to Micah chapter number 5 and verse number 2, Bethlehem, but thou Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth that shall be ruler and to all Israel, and I forgot the rest of it. But the credentials are there. Bethlehem Ephrathah, out of Judah. So the Lord was born in Bethlehem. And we know that according to Matthew chapter number 1 and verse number 1 through 16. He had the title to the throne of David according to the lineage of Matthew chapter 1. He had the title to the throne of David from Joseph, his legal father. And then we see according to Luke, he was born of a virgin. Joseph was his stepfather. God was his father. So Jesus Christ not only the Son of God, but the Son of David. So he had the credentials to come to the sheepfold and gather his sheep. He had them. Now, according to verse number, he came the proper way, according to verse number 1 and 2, and the shepherd is received by the porter, according to verse number 3 of John chapter 10, the Bible said, to him the porter openeth. So he comes a proper way. He's received by the porter. Now the porter is in charge of the sheep till the shepherd came. Now that's kind of interesting. If you'll turn, hold your place there in John 10, go back to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. The porter 
was in charge of the sheep till the shepherd came. John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verse number 15. We're speaking of John the Baptist. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have we all received in grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elijah? And he said, I am not. Art thou that prophet? Of course, that one's spoken by Moses. And, and he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not that Christ, nor Elijah, neither that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom you know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me. I know I'm reading quite a bit, but please follow along. Verse 27. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoe latchets I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Bethabara beyond Jordan where John was baptizing. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore I'm, am I come baptizing with water. And John bare record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same as he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. You go back to John chapter number 10, verse number 3, the porter was in charge of the sheep till the shepherd came. John said that he must increase and I must decrease. Now if you'll notice, according to verse number 3 of John chapter number 10, he calls his sheep by name. The porter receives him, and then the Bible says, And the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. The sheep know the voice of the shepherd. I often wondered, when I read that many times in other places in the Scripture, why are people listening to other than the shepherd, than the true shepherd. They're listening, as one fellow said, to any pied piper that plays the prettiest tune. We need to listen to the true shepherd. Be careful what you hear, and be careful how you hear, is what the Bible tells us. Now, they know the voice of the shepherd. Much of Israel did not recognize the voice of the true shepherd. But I guarantee you this, though that those that wanted truth heard him clearly. Those waiting for the redemption of Israel, we can name off Zacharias and Elizabeth, the parents of John the Baptist. We can name Simeon and Anna that was looking for the redemption of Israel and the consolation of Israel. They were waiting for Messiah. Mary and Joseph received with joy the Savior who came. 
The blind man in John chapter 9 wanted to know more as well. Now, if you'll notice the latter part of verse number 3, it says, And leadeth them out. He calleth his own sheep by name, and he leadeth them out. And when he, verse 4, And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Now, the latter part of verse number 3 almost sounds like a contradiction. We lead people in the fold, and then we have Jesus right here leading them out of the fold. If you'll notice... Uh, in John chapter 9, a lot of people uh, read John chapter 10 without uh, taking in account <clears throat> John chapter number 9. In John chapter number 9, there was a man that was blind from his birth, is what verse number 1 of John chapter number 9 says. And um, then it goes on that in verse 6, that uh, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground. The Lord spat on the ground, made clay of spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And then he told the blind man in verse number 7 to go wash in the pool of Siloam. And then he washed, the Bible said, and came seeing. Verse number 8, The neighbors therefore, and they which before had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, the blind man said, I am he. Other people said, he just looks like him, but that's not really him because he's been blind for a long time. Now verse 10, Therefore they said unto him, How were thine eyes opened? He answered and said in verse 11, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind, and it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight, and he said unto them, He put clay, and of course he called him Jesus previously. He knew it was, his name was Jesus. He said, He put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. See again, we're seeing the Pharisees. They had, they had no concern whatsoever over the soul of an individual. All they were, we were preaching last week about, uh, or I mean Wednesday night about all show and no substance. I mean all substance, all show and no substance. Well, that's exactly what they were. They said, that they, they were saying that Jesus must be a sinner for working on the Sabbath day. And he said, uh, others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. They say unto the blind man again, verse 17, <clears throat> What sayest thou of him that he hath opened thine eyes? He said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him, that he had been blind and received his sight, until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son, who ye say was born blind? How then doth he now see? His parents answered them and said, verse 20, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. We know that. But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, he's old enough. Ask him, he shall speak for himself. Now, verse 22 puts something in there to give us a good picture. It said, these words spake his parents because they what? They, feared, they were afraid of getting cast out of the synagogue. And a man without the synagogue was kind of a loner. 
It's, trying, it's getting cast out of religion, cast out of the synagogue. They feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already in verse 22 that if any man did confess that he was the Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, and that's the only reason they said it according to verse 23, they were afraid of the Jews. In verse 22 and 23, they did not want to be cast out of religion, out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again, verse 24, they called the man that was blind and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he's a sinner or no, I know not. But all I know, or one thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him again, What did he to thee, how opened he thine eyes? And I love this verse 27. I brought it out Wednesday night. He answered them, I have told you already, and you did not hear. Wherefore would you hear it again? Will you also be his disciples? If I keep telling you that Jesus died for your sin and was buried and rose again for your sin, for your justification, will you believe it? What did you say last Sunday? I said that Jesus died for your sin. If I say it again, will you believe it? Will you, what, are you, what else are you looking for? What, what else are you looking for? The blind man said, what else are you looking for? I can see. I was blind, now I see. If I tell you again, will you believe it? Then they reviled him, verse 28, and said, thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spake unto Moses... As for this fellow, speaking of the God, speaking of the, the, the God of glory, the Lord Jesus said, this fellow, let me tell you, he's more than a fellow. Amen. Amen. He's the son of God. He's God the son. He's the one that walked on water and raised the dead, commanded the elements of the universe to sit down and shut up, and they obeyed him. That's who he is. He's more than a fellow. We know not from whence he is. Verse 30, the man answered and said unto them, Why herein is a marvelous thing that you know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes. How can, how can, you, how can you deny this? Now we know that God heareth not sinners. And by the way, that's a quote from the man talking to the Pharisees, from a lost man. I've had people take verse number 31 out and say, the Bible said God doesn't hear sinners. If you take verse number 31 out of the context and say God don't hear sinners, you're going to have a big, big problem reading Scripture. Because when Adam was lost, who was talking to him and listening to him in the garden? The Lord Jesus. When Cornelius prayed and gave alms, his alms and his prayers as a lost man went up for a memorial. God hears everything. To, 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 to say that God does not hear certain things, you're calling Him less than God. He's omnipresent, He's omniscient. He knows everything and He's everywhere. Now, let's go on verse 31. Now, we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth His will, him he heareth. Since the world, now he'll begin to act if you're seeking. I'll agree with that. Amen? Well, the Bible says so. Since the world began, was it not heard that any, man, that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. You know what I told Brother Grady? Where's Brother Grady? Oh, he's outside. Can I talk about him now? Oh, he's coming back in. Brother Grady, I went over up in Crossville long years ago. He said something to a fellow named Larry Jenkins. Larry Jenkins misquoted it and got me all bent out of shape. So I went over to where Brother Grady was working. This is back in 1990 what, Grady? Two, three, four, five? I don't know, somewhere along in there. I went over there and I said, what do you mean talking about me to my parishioners? Telling them I'm lost. After all, I am the preacher of the Faith Baptist Church in 
Cumberland County, Tennessee. Great. He didn't get mad. He didn't say a word. He said, I didn't say you was lost, Brother David. I said, well, it's a good thing. So I, I, went on, I went on back. So you look at verse 34. Thou was altogether born in sins, and does thou teach us? Somebody from, from Milton, Florida, coming to Tennessee trying to teach me something? I'm telling you, folks, it's, I'm, I'm leading to something here. Jesus heard that they had what? Verse 35. Now, go back to John chapter 10 and the latter part of verse number 3. What's he doing? Leadeth them out. Now, again, that sounds almost like it's contradicting what we should be doing, leading them in. But what was the Lord doing? Leading them out of religion. Israel belonged to him. Jesus was leading this blind man out of Judaism, out of religion, and saying, I am Jesus Christ. We need to get saved. Does I believe on the Son of God? Verse 35. The blind man in verse 36 said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. Isn't, isn't this the same thing that happened in John chapter 4? I know Messiah comes, and when he comes, he'll tell us all things. I that speaketh unto thee am he. He identified himself as the Son of the living God. I'm the one that healed you and made you see, and I'm the one that can give you eternal life. And the Bible said he believed, and he said, Lord, verse 38, what? I believe. I believe. God led them out. Christ led them out of religion, led this blind man out so he could lead him in. Lead him in the fold. You see, a lot of people today, I believe, maybe sitting here tonight, need to be led out of religion. You've got a preconceived notion, and how you got it, I, it doesn't matter. And you say, and I've had people inevitably, when I talk about things like this, they say, you're talking about my mama, or my grandma, or my grandpa, or my dad. I'm not either. I'm not either. I begin to preach truth like this, and people say, if my grandpa's not in heaven, nobody's in heaven. You've heard that, Brother Joe, I'm sure. And all you're trying to do is lead them out of religion. Lead them out of religion. Lead them out of tradition. Well, I can go to heaven if, I, if I'm confirmed, and if I get baptized, and if I join the church. I can go to heaven. If I give my tithes and offerings, I can go to heaven. You need to be led out of religion. Led out of religion till you come to the point that you realize that the true shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's what he said. Amen? Now, what they cast out the man that was born blind there in chapter number 9, verse number 35, but we see the sovereign will of God that by circumstances he was led out so he could be led in. And if anyone truly is seeking the Savior, you have a promise after promise after promise in the Word of God that you will find him. And he will according to Luke 24 in two places and other many portions of Scripture, you will find that He will open your understanding. I was talking to a fellow today, and he said he quite couldn't understand something. I said, are you willing to learn? Yes, I'm willing to learn. We went to the book and we began to talk. And he said, I see it. If you're willing to learn, God is willing to meet you anywhere you're at. Hallelujah. So you need to come to Christ today. The shepherd, of course, forms his flock. Then according to verse 7, 8, 9, and 10, very quickly, the shepherd feeds his flock. In verse number 7, Then said Jesus unto them, of John chapter 10, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not 
but for to steal and to kill and to destroy, I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. According to verse number one, thieves and robbers stealing, stealing God's words. And there's so much false religion out there. Just let me read you something real quick um, out of Jeremiah. Listen to this verse in Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse number, verse number 30. Jeremiah 23, verse number 30. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words every one from his neighbor. You see, these thieves and robbers were changing and distorting and stealing the word of God. Amen. Now, I realize that some were doing it out of ignorance. In, in Romans chapter 10, verse number 1 that we use this morning, Paul's prayer was that his brethren after the flesh might be saved, for I bear them record they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Um, there was times, I don't know in your ministry, there was a time in my ministry that I would say things because I had been taught that way. I'd went to school and learned that way, and I repeated what my peers had said. Now, it wasn't their fault. It was my fault. It was my fault for not getting in the Word of God and checking it out. So I can't blame anyone. But I went through a lot of years like the blind man as a religious person. And God had to lead me out of religion to lead me in the fold to lead me into his family. And thank God he did. Amen. Thank God he did. And use people to do so. If you're willing to learn, God will show you. Now, some, some were stealing God's words out of ignorance. Some with contention out of envy and strife, according to Philippians chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. Now, we see those two words, thieves and robbers. Thieves and robbers. Thieves, you have the sneaky thieves, and then the robbers were ruthless plundering thieves, if you want to look that up in the, in the definition of those words. Two kinds of thieves, a sneaky thief and the ruthless plundering thieves. Now that's why we're instructed, and I mentioned early, according to Luke chapter number 8 and verse number 18, you need to be careful, take heed how you hear. How you hear. And you need to, every time the Word of God is open, every time this preacher is up here behind this pulpit, you need to take your Bible and find out if it's thus saith the Lord. Take heed how you hear. And then according to Mark chapter 4 and verse 24, you take heed what you hear. What you hear. I was talking to a young man this morning, and he said, uh, uh, is this Book of Mormon good? And I said, you better trash it. You better be careful what you hear. What happens is you hear so much and you can trample your heart with so much religion and so much false doctrine that what happens to your heart? What happens to a path once it's been, uh, it's been tread upon day in and day out? It becomes hard. It becomes hard. And you need that fallow ground tealed up and and, 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 and to so don't put anything in front of your eyes except the King James Bible. Amen? That should settle it right there. Just, just use the authorized King James Bible and you have the Word of God. I make no apologies about it. Um, I, I, these other perversions might contain it. I won't argue with you, but they are not the Word of God. This does more than contain, it is. Every thought, every jot, every tittle is the preserved, precious word of the living God. Amen. Take heed how you hear and what you hear. Now, we know that Christ is the only door of salvation, John 14, 6. He's a door to nourishment, according to the latter part of verse number 9. She'll go in and out and find pasture, according to John chapter number 10, the last part of verse number 9. Shepherds took the responsibility for locating pasture for their flocks, and it wasn't always easy in an arid land 
And we have, thank God, his word in front of us to feed on and to grow thereby. And he is, the Lord Jesus is the door to abundant life, according to verse number 10. You have life that you might have it more what? Abundantly. Abundantly. We should receive all the blessings in Christ that he has for us. Now, not only does he form his flock, he feeds his flock, and he protects his flock. If you'll notice in verse number 13 and 14, the hireling fleeth because he's a hireling and careth not for the sheep. But Jesus said, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and have known of mine. He protects his flock. You know what he does? He gives us the Holy Spirit of God and he seals us till the day of redemption. Jesus Christ forms his flock, feeds his flock, and thank God he protects his flock. He guards our eternity. Our eternity. Did you get that? Eternity. He guards our... Now, I want, I want to ask you, if you think that you can lose salvation, then probably you hadn't got it. But if you think you can lose salvation, and Jesus Christ is a good shepherd that protects his sheep, tell me who's stronger than God Almighty. Who can break through the Lord Jesus Christ to get to the flock. Say no one. Thank you. I knew you knew that. No one. He forms his flock, feeds his flock, and protects his flock. Amen. God bless you. I'm through. Let's stand to our feet. We'll be dismissed.